Good to see you again, those of you that are watching on YouTube, Unity NBC, Sacramento, California. Hit that subscribe button and do me one other favor. If you enjoy our program, call two or three of your friends, maybe four or five of your friends, and tell them that we're doing our best to lift up the blood stick banner of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So hit that subscribe button. Thank you, thank you. We are still in the book of Romans. What a journey we've been on in Romans. We're only in the ninth chapter. Romans, pro Romanos, the letter of uh, the epistle of Paul to the church in Rome. Oh, what a time we've been having going through Rome, line by line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. And we left you last time at the 26th um, verse of the book of Romans, the ninth chapter. This afternoon, we're going to go to Romans 9, 27 through 29. Romans 9, 27 through 29. But let's recap where we left off at. We left off at where Hosea, Paul quotes Hosea verses 25 and 26. And he says here also in Hosea, I will call them my people who were not my people and her beloved was not beloved. Verse 26, and it shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people. There they shall be called the sons of the living God. We're just going to do take off on last week's title sons of the living God, called to be the sons of the living God, part two. So as we looked at, at uh, nine, we talked about whom he uh, wills, he hardens. And uh, I don't know about you, but I want to be as hard as I can. I want to be as strong as I can for the Lord, not just in one thing, but in everything that I do. I want to be hardened by the Lord for the will of the Lord. We talked about does not the potter have power over the clay from the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor? And in that, we talked about how some uh, will make a potter will make something for something grand or pristine, or, and sometimes they'll make something that will be technically used for garbage. But but here it is, uh, be looked at as garbage. But here it is, the vessel, that vessel that he's talking about there. Um, uh, what if God wanted to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath prepared for destructions, or later on he says his glory on the vessels of mercy. So I want to be part of the mercy, vessels of mercy for the Lord. I don't want to be part of the destruction. And here it is today. We have a lot of people that are just there. They don't care about the Lord. They're trying to mix it with everything that you can think of under the sun. I was a young man trying to, to talk about Islam. Excuse me, that didn't even come along until 600 years after our Lord and Savior walked this earth and resurrected out of this earth. That didn't come along until 600 years later after the Apostle Paul wrote the Bible and said, if anybody, if anybody, even if an angel come to you, with any other gospel that we preach, let them be a curse. I pray somehow or another that young man will hear this today. It is about our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You might say Jesus is nothing but a prophet, but no, he's the son of the living God. No matter what uh, you say, but people today are going after different types of propaganda. But those of us who know who Jesus is, then we have to be right there where it says in Hosea, and it shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, there they shall be called sons of the living God. I am a son of the living God. I am a child of the most high God. Hallelujah today. And that's where we need to be, children of the most high God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse uh, 27. Isaiah also cries out concerning Israel. Now, we talked about Hosea, and by Paul being a very educated man, he would have had knowledge not only of the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, he would have had 
known about the minor and major prophets. Hosea was what was known as a minor prophet. It wasn't that he was less important than the major prophets. It's just the body of work. So today we, we, we segue out of from Hosea in verses 25 and 26. And we go to verse 27. Isaiah also cries out concerning Israel. Now, what he did in verse 27, he quotes Isaiah the 10th chapter, verse 22 through 23. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved. Now, how, what's so deep about this? What's so magnificent about this? It says the number of the children of Israel will be as the sand, hallelujah, of the sea. So when we look at this, the sand of the sea, the number, it is a word called arithmos, where we get the word arithmetic, you know, which then goes down to addition, addition, subtraction, um, multiplication and division, and then on to the greater uh, areas of math. So when we say this, it is uh, arithmos, uh, the arithmetic, and it's the sand, is amos. So arithmos and amos, when we think about it, who can number the sand of the sea? Think of all the seashores all over the world. Out here on the West Coast, down in uh, Mexico, down in, in Central America, down in South America, go all the way around South America and come back up again through uh, the Caribbeans, go to Cuba, the Caribbeans, Bahamas, all those, those seashores, they're sitting here. And then go up into the United States from Florida all the way up to Canada. And then we wanted to talk about Europe and Africa and all of Asia and all over there, but God knows how much sand is in all those areas. Man can speculate. He can uh, say, well, we think it's this, that, and the other, and we can approximate or we can put our best computers on it, but God knows the seashore. He knows how much amorous the sand there is. That is the our almighty God. That's the God that we serve. Man today thinks he's so smart. As I said earlier, they believe in all types of propaganda, but here it is. Here's the God that tells you about the sand in the sea, and that's what Isaiah is saying in Isaiah 10, uh, the 10th chapter. Hallelujah. Verse uh, 28, he will finish the work and cut it, cut it in righteousness because the Lord will make a short work upon the earth. Now, when we look at verse 28, that's Isaiah in the 28th chapter, verse 22. So let's look at this one more time. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because the Lord will make short work upon the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. And so when we look at verse 28, for the Lord will uh, exclude his, execute his word on the earth throughout and quickly, though his word, the logos, when we say the Lord will execute his word, now here it is, in some parts of 28 it'll say, for he will finish the work and cut it short. Uh, some of the others, it will say, uh, for the Lord will execute his word on the earth and thoroughly and quickly. So they are equating the word work and they're equating it with word, his word, his logos, his work. Hallelujah. And here it is. Man cannot fathom God's work. But if we are children of God, if we are the sons of God, then what we have to do is get into the word of God and study the God of word of God. And here's another thing. Use the word of God in this world in which we live. A lot of people don't want to use the word of God. They want to make up things. They want to go and get something off the internet and come back and, and, and preach it. Now, let me just say something about that. If you're a preacher, you do that. Be very careful of doing that because you don't know who wrote that. 
They may have written something that is out of left field. So when you come back and quote it and you haven't studied it, you haven't researched it, you haven't prayed about it, you haven't looked at it, you could just be up saying any old thing. If you're going to deal with the word of God, get into the word of God. Study the word of God. Learn to execute the word of God. Learn to look at it and go back two days later and look at it again. When you do sermon preparation, get into the word of God. The people of God, they, they deserve for when you get up that you be under the anointing of the power of the Holy Ghost. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke. That's why we can't destroy the yoke anymore. That's why we can't uh, seem like get people in the church because we are not into the word of God like we are supposed to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's how 28 breaks down. And verse 29. And as Isaiah said before, unless the Lord Hallelujah. Uh, of the Sabal had left us a seed, we would have become like Sodom and we would have been like Gomorrah. Again, this is Isaiah, the first chapter, Isaiah 1 9, and Isaiah, the 13th chapter, verse 19. So that's Isaiah 1 9 and Isaiah. 13, 19. And sometimes in your Bibles, it'll, it'll have margins to tell you where to look back on all these things because, we, especially here with Paul, because Paul, as I said earlier, Paul was an educated man and he knew his history of his people. He was Pharisee upon Pharisee, meaning Pusherim on Pusherim, so he would know and he would have known and have read the text, the sacred text. So when he's quoting them, he's quoting them because he knows. That's why I just got to tell you, you got to know the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. Let's read that one more time. And Isaiah said in another place, if Lord Almighty, if God Almighty had not spared a few of us, we would have been wiped out as completely as Sodom and Gomorrah. So what he's telling the people, he's telling the, the Jews there and later on into the Gentiles as well, not only is God in control of all this, but 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 no matter what happens, there's always going to be a remnant. That's why a lot of people today are uh, saying the church is dying in America. As somebody say, I heard somebody say this on the radio a couple of days ago, they give the church by 9, 2040, that's just what, 17, 16 years from now? I might be wrong on that. Um, there may not be a church in America. Well, here it is. There may not even be a world. We don't know when the Lord is coming back because he is coming back again. And just like Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because of wickedness in the land, the Lord called to the Lord to slot and his wife and his daughters out of the city. But the wife of Lot did not want to leave something in Solomon and Gomorrah. So the Bible says she turned back. And the Bible says she then turned to a pillar of salt. You got a lot of people today that don't understand this world is wrapping up. Don't you see how crazy it's getting in the world today? We don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next. That's why, as my daddy used to say, it behooves us to get our hand in God's unchanging hand. Learn to look to the hills from which cometh your help, knowing that your help comes from the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. I'm here to tell you today there's only one name given under the heavens by which men shall be saved at the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow. Some people don't want to bow, but there's a day coming, my brothers and sisters. Every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm here to tell you today, just like there was a remnant left back in those days and the ancient, far ancient times, God is will leave a remnant. Don't worry about what man says. Don't worry about what man does. Just keep on believing that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God and that he died on that cross, was put on a borrowed cross, put on a borrowed tomb. But guess what? He 
got up on the third day morning with all power in his hands. Thank God for that. Thank God for that. Thank God for that.